metal alloys appearing to be identical in shape are truly as such when evaluated at the micro scale? Well, the image to my right is a closer look on how this metal would appear to be, a totally non-corroded sample, while the one to my left is the one corresponding to this alloy, a highly corroded one. Corrosion has serious negative effects, not only on our safety, but also on our health and environment. Localized corrosion is perhaps the most challenging type to deal with, causing destructive damages to building, bridges, pipelines, airplanes, and eventually, our lives. Some examples of this is the huge oil spills in California 2015 and the Sierkowski helicopter crash in the North Sea in the year 1974. For this, the ability to evaluate and further predict localized corrosion has been a growing interest for both scientists and engineers in an attempt to control the pit before escalating and causing a catastrophe. Hello everyone, my name is Sara Yassim and this is what we do in our lab. In this video, we'll be highlighting two of the electrochemical techniques that we use to further study and analyze localized corrosion at the micro scale. Hi everyone, my name is Emmanuel and today I will show you our electrochemical probe scanner. So basically, our equipment consists of three major components. The first one is a positioning system. The second one, the electrochemical interface, and finally, the data acquisition system. So our equipment can apply several techniques, and perhaps the most popular one is the scanning electrochemical microscopy, or SECM. So come on, let's take a closer look at it. The SECM setup includes four elements, a microelectrode as a probe, a substrate of interest, a reference electrode, and a counter-electrode. SCCM measurements are based in the reaction that occurs at the tip of the microelectrode, which is immersed in an electrolyte containing a redox mediator. The microelectrode is positioned and scanned very close to the substrate surface in order to characterize both its topography and reactivity. You can find more information about SCCM operation modes in the link below. The next image is an example of a SCCM map obtained using an aluminum alloy as a substrate. You can see in the map that the hot spots match with specific microstructural features, whereas the blue areas are related with the matrix of the alloy. This difference in reactivity may be a first indication of microgalvanic coupling mechanisms. Hello everyone, this is Yuan Yao. Using this equipment, we can run another technique, scanning micropapide contact method SMCM. In the setup, a solution filled micropapide will be used to form a droplet at the end. Then the micropapide is pushed to the substrate surface until the droplet contacts the surface. Then, electrochemical measurement can be carried out on the droplet whited surface. However, in the chlorine study, the commonly used sodium chloride solution will evaporate rapidly in the form of droplet. So, to prevent the evaporation, we immerse the droplet under the mineral oil that covers the substrate surface. By scanning the droplet under the mineral oil, we have successfully mapped the aluminum alloy surface. The obtained chlorine potential map have a grid corresponding to the surface feature. Then we can analyze the microscopic galvanic chlorine between the inclusion and the matrix. These are the two techniques we are currently applying in our lab to investigate the localized coding. If you enjoyed the glimpse that we've given you on what you do in our lab today, and you're excited for more on this topic, don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay tuned.